Welcome back everyone, Grimer here doing another episode from the Pixelmon Evolved server and I have been a busy guy, I've been very busy in fact. Uh, earlier today I went out and I met up with Jinx, one of the members on the server here, and we both had some trading to do so that we could evolve our Pokemon. He needed to get a couple of Golems and I needed to get my Alakazam and I needed to get my Gengar. So we both did that, it worked out pretty good, thank you very much sir for doing that. Uh, so with my newly powered team, I went and took on a very low level NPC gem <laughs> and just pummeled the crap out of them, uh, which left me with the Zypher badge, well earned, well earned, and then shortly after that, just outside that gem actually, I found a legendary Hoopa uh, that spawned, it was in the same biome, and unlike the previous attempts with a, uh, uh, against a legendary, this time I actually had plenty of uh, Pokeballs, in this case Timer Balls, and a lot of time, and I had my Breloom uh, built up, and this happened. I actually caught a legendary. I got him. So there he is, Hoopa. He is now on my uh, or in my uh, PC. I went from there and uh, went and caught a Pick uh, Mimikyu and a Vulpix. Vulpix is actually pretty rare, but I did get him. Nice. Uh, and then uh, underwater, when I was uh, collecting resources, I ended up finding a Manaphy. He spawned in on, on me because I was the only one on the server at the time. And same thing with uh, as with the Hoopa. With enough, uh, with enough timer balls, eventually I ended up catching him as well. Oh, look at that. I caught him. I got a Manaphy. Nice. Awesome. Dynamic punch. Uh, I'll get that later. Oh, okay. I'm underwater. Okay, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Bucket trick. Well, out in the ocean, though, I did go around and collect a great uh, number of water stone shards, and then I broke them all down using fortune, which ended up yielding quite a bit of... Uh, of water stone shards which leads us to where we are right now and here i am rocking my water stone armor now i didn't actually put the boots on because these things still have depth strider on them and they're really handy so uh i can put them on if i ever want to do some underwater stuff so i have the water breathing but as far as moving in water i kind of like these better so anyway oh look at that i caught a basculin not exactly the same way you're supposed to catch them in pokemon but whatever but uh what the heck Okay, so there's a there's a Venusaur, a big one right here, boss. I actually don't really have much in the in line for fighting a uh, grass type, so I'm just gonna let you chill there for a little bit, bud. Um, I have been catching a lot of Pokemon just kind of off camera, not just the Mimikyu and the Vulpix, but if you come look in the PC here, here's all my collections so far. Uh, I did get a Charizard actually. I caught him out in that uh, on that volcanic island, uh, which is pretty cool. I also fell into the ocean after catching him. Uh, but all these little ones that I got here, too. I caught a couple of Mimikyus, actually. One male, one female. I thought that was pretty cool. I found a Pseudo Wudo. That was also kind of a fun thing. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, the Legendaries. I haven't found any Shinies, but there's uh, Manaphy and Hoopa. Now, Hoopa, I believe, you can get to evolve into some kind of thing. Hold on, my computer's really struggling here. Um, can it get to evolve into something, like like a flying thing or something? Like, you got to take this uh, prison bottle, I believe, which he comes with when you catch him. You throw him out, and I think you just right-click on him with it. Okay, yep, it's doing something. That thing, that's what he turns into. Here, you can have this back now, bud. <laughs> I don't really want that. No, I think he stays like this for like three in-game days or something, but I believe you can just like, he can grab you. I like going F5 here. He can grab you and just just take off with him. How cool is that? Of course, it's not cool if he changes back to his other form mid-flight, but, I mean, it looks cool now. I'm not really familiar with Hoopa. Um... I haven't actually used that one that much. Uh, it's also in a later generation from when uh, when I last played Pokemon. So I don't really know much about that guy. But I got him. I'm going to go stick him back in the PC now. Ooh, with all the frame rate glory here. Alright, so today's episode, though, is about this base here. Okay, so this is my starter home. This is just my basic place for getting going on the server. And aside from the giant Venusaur that's standing there... Um, it's it looks good. It looks nice. You know that thing looks kind of ugly, but this thing looks nice. It's coming along. I built a nice little custom tree here, also just kind of helped the landscape out a little bit. Also added a couple more block variations and stuff, mixed it up a bit, and it's coming along nice. I I am also uh, sticking with a Mulga who's all the way up to level fourteen, uh, but I'm sticking with a Mulga just because when you fly, you can look down. He just hovers up there, so you can actually see things. You're not like on a Charizard where there's wings. <laughs> And a big flapping uh, dragon underneath you. But this is, uh, so you can actually see what you're doing, basically, is the reason why I'm still using them. But this is basically it. I got my little dock jutting off the water there. The Mulga is also really annoying, though. Uh, but I got the nice little dock jutting off the water there and these little lights that I have set up kind of around the house. 
Uh, I might do a little bit with the forest around it, maybe add another custom tree. In fact, that's kind of what I want to do today is add another another tree or two and then uh, do that up the train on the other side of the house here. And that's basically it. That's going to be it. Oh, there's another boss. There's bosses everywhere. I don't have any good way of taking that one out either. I need to level my guys up. Uh, speaking of, uh, my guys right now, uh, level 50 for my Breloom, not too bad. I gotta think of a name for that. I'm thinking like some kind of sleep, uh, sleeping pills or something. Uh, that might be kind of a funny name, like, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, I'd have to Google that one. Uh, Ralph is still as big as he ever is. Well, he's at, actually up to level 61, which is kind of nice. Uh, Cream is at 79. That's awesome, getting oh so higher and getting up to level 100. Cream is kind of the reason why I can't take these guys out, because that's the only one that's actually up there. The rest of them, like, he's at 61, which isn't too shabby, but then he's like, no, okay, yeah. So Yuri Geller here is at uh, at 39, which isn't that great. 28, not good, and 14. So, yeah, I got some uh, I got some work to do on some of the other guys, and that's why I can't take out bosses very easily right now. But for today, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to work on building a, uh, a little bit more with the landscape around this area. And then that's basically going to be it for the starter base. I think the starter base is going to be it. I went over to the Ominous Woods biome today, and I put down that sign saying, This whole coastline is mine. Uh, and I also got to work on collecting resources for that. I found this stuff. Okay, here's the plank ver uh, version of it, and here's the log version of it. This stuff looks amazing. Okay, this is ebony wood. Ebony wood? Ebony wood. Okay, and this is what they look like. I love this. So if I'm going for a creepy shipwreck, I'm using some of this for sure. Uh, and then in contrast to that, because when you're talking about like dried wood that's not waterlogged, um, it would probably look very pale, very white actually. And I found out that this mangrove stuff looks amazing as well. Oh, I didn't grab that log. Look at that. Oops. Yeah, this looks this looks amazing as well. Um, the planks of this actually are like solid white. They're the, basically the opposite of this one. So if you were to put this one up here, bink, it turns to black. This one is completely white. Uh, I like the contrast, and especially if it's going to look like a kind of a ghost spooky ship kind of thing. I think that will look really amazing. So I'm going to be kind of mixing those woods together uh, to build the ship, I'm thinking. I, I'll, I'll probably find some... Oh, there, I'm trying to hack this up with an axe. I'll probably switch it up and do some other ones, too. I am also going to have to go mining again, too, because although I had a nice stockpile of diamonds there, so I need to get a little low, uh, I did go ahead and get uh, Dampy up and running, my Silk Touch uh, shovel, uh, as well as a Diamond Axe going, which I named Diamond XU, Pokemon reference. But now I think it's time that I get to work on a little bit of a tree. Where is this tree going to go? Probably right where this Venusaur is, which just sort of sucks. I need him out of the way. And I can't find... Can I just push him? Push the thing. Oh, I actually think I did. All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna get this guy to despawn real quick. Hold on one second. Okay, it's a brand new day also that uh, Venusaur has uh, beat feet and he's gotten out of here. Uh, thank you, despawning. I just kind of flew away to get rid of him. Okay, we got to create like a little bit of a tree kind of want to have it like uh, kind of sort of hanging towards the river I'm thinking so we're just gonna wing this uh, winging it's usually how things go uh, wrong but uh, we're gonna try, we're gonna try it anyway uh, something like that high-ish roughly and this is like I said very much just ring winging it so I don't really know how this is gonna turn out uh, is that far enough over that's probably far enough uh, so we're, we're trying to get the, the shape of the tree right now and I'm also yeah that should be fine I'm also trying to um, get a um, the branches basically laid out at this point. So I go ahead and bink, bink. And like when you're creating branches for trees, um, I you do whatever you want to do. Honestly, I, there is no real method to this madness other than just do what you think kind of looks good. Um, I found that it works pretty well to just kind of create like a little three-pronged shape thing kind of like that I'll bump that up a little bit kind of like that and then then you go from there yeah something something like that okay so if that was our tree that's a uh, I don't actually like how low this is let me get up there real quick I could actually fly up there Yeah, I need to raise this up just a bit. Let's do something like that and then chop off the underside. Something like that. Um, 
Yeah, I guess that works. Um, all right, and then uh, we're gonna thin up the trunk just a wee bit. Actually, that should be fine. Okay, so now that we have uh, roughly the basic shape, I'm not, I'm not like this. I almost wish the whole thing was just up one block. Okay, let's make that happen real quick. Okay, tree raised up one. Okay, uh, I kind of like that a little better. Let's go ahead and uh, do something like this for the base. Mm. Oh, that block just straight up disappeared. Deuces, it's out. Okay. Yeah, something like that. That should be just fine. Now, let's get around to adding the leaves. Um, hopefully, this ends up turning out okay, because otherwise, I'm going to be rebuilding this whole thing off camera. Okay, so adding the leaves, there is also no real method to this madness. You just got to start putting these guys down and fluff up the tree a bit. Uh, I want to kind of keep it along the same lines as the uh, the one that I had over on the other side of the house. So it's kind of roughly like the same type of tree, if there was even such a thing, considering this is a completely fictional tree. I, I'm not even basing this off of, like, oak or anything. This is just straight up, here's a tree. Here's some wood. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get work, work on this. So what I'm doing right now is just getting some kind of shape for the overall tree, and then I'm going to fill it in more as I go. And then I also have these, uh, what are these called? These yellow autumn leaves. I found those in another biome. I think they are amazing. I love them. I think they're great. Um, let's, uh, let's zip over here real quick. Let's get these off real quick. I'm just basically outlining the branches right now, uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, that's fine. And just a little bit right here. A little bit of a buildy episode here. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Um, some of this stuff is uh, it's kind of kind of interesting. But I haven't done a buildy episode really on on here yet, other than just to show you the wood boxes I built that, <laughs> and then and then the rest of that stuff I basically did it off camera with updates. So. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just slap down a layer right on top of these. Oop, I ran out of leaves. I threw them on the ground. The leg that I have whenever I run OBS also while I'm uh, playing is a little intense. All right, and I should have actually widened this just a wee bit. Yeah, something like this. So this is once it's still just getting the rough shape. That's fine. That one's out of place, but whatever. It's still just roughly getting a shape for the tree itself. And after all, let's not forget, this is a starter piece. I might need to go get more leaves. Oh no, I got another stack right here. I still might need to go get more leaves. I always end up needing more leaves when I do these things. All this, so the reason why a lot of builds, I think, kind of fail is most people forget to address the landscape. Um, they just kind of slap things down, and the build itself looks amazing, but it doesn't really pop because the landscape never got any love. And so I'm trying to avoid doing the same exact thing by uh, doodadding up this a little bit, even though this is, like I said, just a starter base. I think that it's... Uh, Deserves a little love and attention. After all, I need to get my start here on the server at this place. So before I leave it forever and ever, I might want to actually uh, perfect this thing. Uh, let's slap down a couple of them right up top here. Yeah, something like that. All right, so oh, expose log just like that right there, just sitting there. Okay, uh, so how is this looking uh, from down below? I know down below it's going to look pretty derpy, and that's okay because I haven't done anything from down below yet. Let's eat a fish. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. I might have to move this guy because he's a little too close. Let's go ahead and get to chopping. I'm gonna collect some leaves while I'm here too. Okay, tree gone. Uh, let's keep fluffing this one. It's all about the fluff. So I do wanna make it look almost as if it's draping over the branches a wee bit also. Uh, so some of this stuff can drop down, but not all of it. And I, uh, I don't really want to put it directly underneath. Uh, if it does drop down, though, it's got to be fluffed again.
I might need to get back up there with the Mulga a little bit. And uh, let's slap down some in here. Something like that, maybe. It's looking a little flat down at the bottom here. Got to got to have a drop down just a little bit more to add a little depth. There we go. That's better. All right, and then right here, this is the tallest branch. So we're going to actually bring this down just a bit. Try not to fall in the water behind me. I fell in the water. Look at that. All right, that's probably getting pretty close. Let's, uh, let's go take a look. I'm all good to get out of the fence first. All right, let's take a look. What does this thing look like? I mean, it's kind of looking like a custom tree. I mean, it's hard to tell with the other trees around it there, but this looks a little weird. Let me bring this out just a bit. Fluff this out a bit more. And I'm out of leaves, so hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so that's that's basically the tree. Now it's all about just putting up, putting it up a little bit. Let me uh, let me get a mulga back in the ball so it shuts up and uh, sleeps so that you guys can see a little bit more during the day about what's going on. This is probably going to be my final episode actually from the starter base. So next time uh, you see me, I might actually be out at the new place working on that. Aside from maybe doing a flyover of this place in, in its final final form. But all right, let's uh, let's start adding some branches and stuff into this. Uh huh. Let's uh, we're gonna take out a couple of things here, or there. Throw in a couple of these uh, fence posts because they kind of work pretty good for like uh, like branches. You can kind of actually even have them stick out a little bit. They don't even really need to make much sense. Like you can put, throw one right there if you want. Uh, these are like the little twigs that are sticking out of the tree. Um, yeah, that should be fine for up there. Uh, let's, let's slap one down right there too. So, like, from a distance, especially, and quick passing by, that's what it looks like. I wonder if any of you actually noticed that I actually did the same thing on this one, too, uh, when I first showed it off. There's actually little twigs in there. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and smooth out the something or another. I don't have them in my inventory. Do I have them in here? Or did I do anything with these things? Yes, there they are. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a little wood plank action to some of the trunk parts, just to kind of add a little texture change, so it's not just one blah, monotonous bit thing. Found that that actually adds a, a little bit of interesting. Is that interesting or is that dumb? I think that's dumb. I, th I found that that adds a little bit of an interesting look to the thing, um, so that it kind of kind of looks pretty wooden. I mean, aside from the fact that it's made out of what this deerling. This deerling has it coming. Has it coming here? Drain punch. Goodbye, deerling. Thanks for the steak. All right, so then we're getting down to where like it digs into the ground a little bit, and I threw them on the ground. That leg, I'm telling you, it kills me. Uh, this is where it kind of digs into the ground a little bit. So I usually like to add cobblestone, just because it's almost as if it's like uprooting some of the land, and they don't really have uh, dirt half blocks. So you do what you got to do. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that doesn't look too shabby. And there you go. You got yourself a custom tree. Now, I do have to go through and add these things, so I better get to that. Let's start from down below here. This just adds, uh, this is not something I would do in vanilla, actually. It just adds a little, little, uh, color to the tree, actually. Uh, in fact, you can bury a couple in there, too, like that. Like that there. Okay. And this adds just a little bit of color to the tree. If you look at the other one, I mean, it looks almost as if some of the branches are actually dying. You know, like maybe, maybe, uh, a pidgety snapped a twig or something up in there, and, and it's now leaving it kind of kind of yellowish looking in that area. I think it adds an interesting kind of little color change to it. Yeah, something like that. Um, I could probably get away with doing one more from down here. And let's slap one right on the side there like that. Okay, let's get back up there then. Not you. There we go. 
Let's get up top here and get to work on replacing some of these things. I think it's funny, it's Pixelmon, right? And here I am doing a building episode. Um, I won't be doing a lot of these, really. Not like this, there'll be more updates, I think. But k wants to know how to do some of this stuff. I mean, uh, if you've seen the kingdom that I built in Vintage Craft, you know that there's a lot of custom... Oh, I fell out of a tree. There's a lot of uh, custom terrain that was done there as well. And that wasn't done on accident, nor was it done very quickly. Like, all this stuff takes time. Um, but you do have to have a rough idea of what you're going for. What, what kind of terrain you're trying to set up. In this case, it's supposed to be more of a woodland kind of terrain. So obviously, like, as opposed to the vintage craft build where there's sand and stuff mixed in there, there's no sand here in this one. In fact, there's gravel and there's a couple bits of stone and it's all more more of a, a tundra-y feel. Now, in, in this mod pack, we actually do have uh, different biomes that have things like tundra that you could add. Uh, and it will take a little bit of exploring, but I'll eventually find things like that that I can add to the builds. But for right now, I'm just leaving it as is. I'm trying to stick to a lot of vanilla stuff with the exception of a couple things like, you know, limestone for the walls and stuff. Um, and then these nice colored leaves. As I find things, I'm kind of trying to add them in. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things to explore out there. I mean, seriously, look at the map for crying out loud. Let me pull it up here. Okay, let me uh, let me get back to where I am right now. Okay, so this is where I am. This is my little, uh, this is my starter base right here. You can see the dock jutting off. It looks kind of cool and stuff like that, especially on the mini map. This is where I started, and this is spawned down here. Uh, but then out where I'm going to be going and building is kind of nuts, actually. There's that bird gym that I beat, and I beat, I got Hoopa right around there. Uh, but then as you travel farther, thank you once again to Omnishade for pointing out this biome way out here for me so that I can actually get going on this. I, I did all this exploring out here, and I found some pretty crazy stuff. It's a lot of cool biomes. I love biomes aplenty. This is awesome out here. And the frame rate's not really helping my computer much. But look at how far I went out here looking at all this stuff. There's all sorts of crazy places to see and explore. I also found, here's the ominous woods I'm going to be building. In fact, I'm thinking about building right along here. That's probably where my base is going to be. I'll have to scope it out a little bit again, but uh, I did set up the sign there. But, I mean, look at all this stuff. I did find a mesa, and I found, uh, this is where I found that ebony wood is in this, uh, what's it, a brushlands, I think it's called. There's so many different types of... Uh, of biomes that you can find in biomes of plenty. It's just nuts. Look at all the swamp land up here too. It's just insane. Here's the redwood forest in case anyone's watching and wants to know where to go catch Vulpix if you're on the server. Uh, the redwood forest during the uh, night is where you find Vulpix. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. Big marshland area too. I, I mean, there's so much stuff to see on the server. It's just insane. And it's just because, you know, like biomes of plenty and then all the stuff for Pokemon are added in there. Uh, but I think that's, I think that's about it for this tree. I think that I think that's about all I'm going to be doing on that one right there. I mean, that looks that looks all right. Let's go take a let's take a look back. Nothing looks good in Minecraft up close, so you have to take a step back. I do, I do have to add like the greenery and the shrubs and maybe some more bushes. Like this one has some like bushes going around it, but this one I'll I'll get to work on that probably off camera. But I think that's about it. That's how I, that's how I basically do my custom training and stuff like that. And I do like to take a lot of time on it. Pidgeotto, back off, back off, Pidgeotto. I don't care if you have a type advantage on me. I will still drain punch you into oblivion. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I think that's going to probably call it. This might be a little bit of a shorter episode. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm not really keeping track of the time. But I think that's going to probably call it for for the uh, for the for this episode of uh, Pixelmon Evolved. I'm going to be uh, cutting back the episodes just a wee bit because one episode a day during the weekdays is pretty rough. Oh, um, my Basculin despawned. Oh, that's probably when I left to get the Venusaur to despawn. Uh, because one episode a day is pretty rough, uh, it's pr pretty tough to keep up with that. So I'm going to be dialing back just a little bit, um, and eventually maybe get down to just one episode a week, one or two episodes a week, I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comment section if you're enjoying these things, if you want me to keep up or doing more. I'm just going to stand here on the dock with my fish, and my, uh, my Breloom, and, uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this, uh, Buildy episode. Breloom, face the camera. Okay, he's leaving. Bye, Breloom. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. And I will catch you guys in the next one where we actually start getting out to the ominous woods more. Uh, thank you all for watching, and bye-bye. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Click on some of these things here, you see. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Avoiding audio copyrights. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>